Hey, Dame. What's good? You know, I was curious. We've been home for a minute now recording remotely. And, you know, I just feel like I've had so much more time on my hands. I've been listening to more music, watching more shows, engaging with more podcasts. And I was curious, have you listened to any podcasts recently? Nope. Still no. I I make this and I watch things. And I love all you podcast listeners because you make this work possible. (laughs) But all you other podcasters, don't ask me. I have not heard your podcast. I'm really sorry. It is no hard feelings. I don't listen to my own. (laughs) If you were... If I were to though, a podcast. I know where I would go. Where would you go? I'm going to check out Overcast. Overcast is an independent podcast app that embraces the open world of podcasting instead of locking it down. No exclusives, no premium content, no paywalls, just a great podcast app for everyone. Yeah, I love independence. I love free things. This sounds like where I'm going to have to go uh, step into this game of podcast listening. Podcast for the people. Get it for free on the App Store. Hello. Yo, yo. It's Ergo. It is indeed. I am Kiss. And I am Damon. We are here. And what we do here is reshape the culture of our city and world for the more liberatory and creative. You know, we haven't like done like a regular ass sign on in a while. I was like feeling a little grandiose in it and I pulled back. But no, I'm going to lean into it. That's what we say we do. And I'm just going to be okay with that. How are you <laughs> feeling, Dave? Did you feel embarrassed? No, I don't feel embarrassed. At all. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we are here. We are excited. We are back with another listening party with the phenomenally talented Fem Dot. Um, it's really comforting to be able to tap back into one of the roots of our show, which is our artistic community. And Fem Dot is a is a shining star, an example of how our creative space here in Chicago not only creates phenomenal work like the project Not For Sale that we're going to be listening to, but also phenomenal work out in the world and just deeper interrogations about, you know, like existence and what it means to be a human being in this world. So very grateful to, for FemDot for this conversation and definitely, definitely excited for the drop of Not For Sale. What we do on these listening party episodes is we pick three or four songs from the project and um, we kind of use them as jumping off points to talk with the artist. Um, so you're going to hear, I guess, five songs from the eight song project, Not For Sale. You can hear the entire project wherever you stream your music. You should also check out the work that he talks about at the end with his Delacrem Scholars program, where they're providing scholarships and supplies for both college students, but then also young artists to be able to succeed in their craft and continue to create Uh, The website for that is delacremscholars.org. Yeah, and just excited to really hear about that work and how it's, you know, connected and informed by other community work. So shout out to Pivot and the Feet, the West Side efforts and initiative, and definitely shout out to the People's Grab and Go work that happened last summer coming out of uprising and pandemic intersection. Um, And and work like the scholarship fund is really the essence from which Ergo was birthed, you know, being able to talk about the intersection between our political and artistic communities is what we're here to do. So really excited by that. And surprise, surprise, we were able to get into a little bit of conversation about capitalism and patriarchy. Folks should be shocked, <gasps> but we were able to squeeze it in there. <laughs> I know, I know. What a, what a surprise. What a, what a wild turn for us. <laughs> As a reminder, which we never remind you to do, uh, you should make sure you subscribe to Ergo wherever you listen to your podcasts, rate, comment, review on those platforms so more people find us, share us with a friend. You can, of course, also donate to Ergo directly uh, on our website, ergoradio.com slash donate. Um, We got a couple more episodes this year. We're going to be doing a little bit more of this kind of listening party stuff. Uh, Check out the other work we did this year around our Climate Change Makers show, as well as One Million Experiments. They're all in your podcast feed, but you can also search for them separately. Anything else I forgot on the promo end? It's been so long since we actually did it like this. Nah, we good. Let's get to it. So we're going to jump off with the title track featuring Alex Bannon, produced by my friend Nate and Renzel. This is Fem Dot with Not For Sale. Here we go. Oh, baby. 
I buy me a Mari free. Uh, they talk about who the artist I wear I'm from. It's already me. Yeah. Said I'm too unique. Uh, can no one owe me or owe me? You want me, then you gotta pay me a fee. Yeah. You cannot buy me a Mari free. Uh, y'all talking like we some rookies. It can't be me, so we too elite. Yeah. So what's it gonna be? Uh, you can say all that you want, but all that I want is all you will see. Not for sale. We are here with none other than, I think this is officially a super homie, the the multi-talented, brilliant, lyricist, musician, carer of humanity, Femdot is in the building. (laughs) (laughs) Drum rolls. So... First of all, thank you for being here and congratulations on, me, a, on a beautiful body of work. Before we get talking to the music, we, we want to start where we do in our tradition, two-part question, and it's all about time. So in this time, how is the world treating you and how are you treating the world? The world's treating me all right. The world is not, it's not too shabby. I'm, I'm healthy. I was like sick as hell for like hella. And not like COVID, just like other sicknesses so it's cool to like have my body back so it's treating me pretty well and i guess how i'm treating the world uh over the past couple months like i try to start my day with as much like gratitude as possible like i wake up and just instantly like try to find things i'm grateful for and try to like hold that energy out throughout the rest of the day so i've been seeing the world that way like just just real just really in a form of gratitude so hopefully that has come off to the world as well before we get into the songs, I want to like use that lens or that approach to the project. And so when you when you think of Not For Sale, whether it was the making of it, whether it was how it's being received, whether it is the entity itself, where does gratitude come up for you relative to, to this work? One, just the ability to make music. You know, I haven't dropped in two years before then. So like the ability to make music for people to actually want to still listen to my music or even want to listen to my music more uh, is not something that happens for most artists. So that's something I'm just extremely grateful for. And even outside of that too, just the ability like um, for people to see my growth in real time, like as a musician, but also as a person through the music is super fire. So like, I think those are probably the main two things and just even just the ability to finish a body of work, um, which is a a large feat in itself. So I think those are probably the things that I'm the most grateful for in terms of the project itself. It's interesting you said that about completing it. I do think, you know, in comparison to to past work, you know, this is obviously tighter, it's fewer songs, and it feels cohesive in a really different way. Yeah. Um, there's still a wide range of sounds and what the songs do, but you, you can tell the the kind of themes running through, even if it's not explicit storytelling, you can feel like the the momentum through it. What felt different in starting to craft this in that way? How did how did the growth make that kind of cohesiveness possible? I mean, sonically, uh I can hear you know, keys more like literally like, oh, this key or in this key or um, I know I always want to go in a different direction than whatever I went before. Um, And I just knew like I was just feeling different. You know, I'm in a different space. Um, I have different life experiences and more things to talk about. But also my my ideas, like my albums are always planned out like years in advance. So it was just, I finally got to this point where I was like, damn, I can now finally start talking about this in this manner. And what does that feel like? It feels like this. Um, So yeah, it's, it's, it's a very interesting process when it comes to like picking different sounds or like telling a certain story. Uh, Cause a lot of times, or a lot of times recently, like you make projects that from start to end are cohesive or things of that sort. But I also really wanted this to really feel like a conversation with myself. And I always go back to science. Damn near, damn near like a research paper or like a um or a uh lab report where you have to have your intro that kind of sums up what the conclusions are, but then you have all of the, you know what I'm saying, information in the middle and then your conclusion at the end. But like the abstract is like the intro, right? So I love this particular rap nerding 
like <laughs> that just it, the the Venn diagram with just generic nerding is like right there and i'm really <laughs> we, we also dropped the ball we should have consulted with you we uh we're doing this <laughs> this other show one million experiments about abolitionist experiments throughout the land oh that's and we're, and we're so over our head on the metaphor and we try to do these science metaphors on and we don't experiments. Oh. <laughs> and i'm a, just I'm, fumbling our way through, through the humor <laughs> i'm literally i'm a walking i am a walking science metaphor y'all are dropping the ball for yeah, sure we definitely jack we, we 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 had you on, on the jack didn't hit you yeah, um so, sure. so i i, I want to take that as we start to go into some of the music of um just the sonics of how you're paying attention and and how that's one of the I'm hearing it as a growth and process of like yeah. the key, key selections, mm-hmm. I'm sure, with the instruments, but also vocally. So that's yeah. one of the things I just want to receive from what I just heard you say. And as mm-hmm. we go through some of the tracks, like as we're gathering what the stories are, how you grew in that process of making those key choices and how that relates to to what's being related. Um, yeah, so that, is, that, is that a pin drop? In that is a pin drop. That is a pin drop. I, I heard something. When we, we, we have dropped that pin. So with, with that science essay metaphor, you said like up top, it, it feels like it's it's stating the the claim or the, the abstract. What would you say, or, or how do you understand what the hypothesis of this project is? I think it's really just uh, the idea of like how does money, um, relationships, religion, and lineage, how does that play into self worth and confidence, and, and then that what the relationship of self worth and confidence is. So. That is, I guess, the loose hypothesis is is trying to see what those play into self worth. So you named. I just want to make sure I got it right. You said money, relationships, religion, and lineage. Yeah, and and real quick as as we hop in, like what prompted that that question, right? Like where 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 was the the inquiry? What was the research? What where were you at that made those four things which you identified that you wanted to to investigate? Uh it's technically been a conversation that I've been having with myself since twenty fourteen, maybe. Um like with the first Della Creme project. Um but getting to a point where uh I am starting to see money that I haven't seen before, right? Off my craft, right? And realizing what the value of that was or just how we view money in general. And then also just like surviving, you know, it's very much an identity shift that occurred pretty drastically. You know, when you graduate school, half of your identity is rooted in being a student, right? So I graduated, I dropped the album, quit my job and rapped full time at the same time. Now it's finding balance and being an artist along with who I am outside of just being a student, which I'm still a student, but outside of being a structured student, right? And all of that was happening while I was making this project. Some was happening before then, because some of these songs are old as hell, but the culmination of this project was that experience uh, of that time. Yeah, that certainly comes through. Let, let, let's hop into it. All right, so we're going to start off with Digits featuring uh, Ergo alum, uh, The Mind. Let's get into it from Not For Sale, Fem.Digits. Things that you ain't never seen. That's why everything I spit sound like it come from Medellin. Remember thinking this was it when I was 17. I was trying to be an activist and bro was selling le- Is you rolling or not? Yeah. Is you rolling or not? You know me, I'm not trying to be anything I wasn't before. What? Ladies and gentlemen, we are not around. Not one bit, not a little bit, not a thought. We are not. Hey, tell, tell your man. What? Tell your man's man. Tell your people. We are not around. Okay? All right. What? Come on, man. We did this independent. Had this silver teeth in the pen. We did it all back with the realest. I'm minding my business. Put out all my time and my business. Ain't hitting me. Talk about this. We did this independent. We had this silver teeth in the pen. So we did it all back with the realest. I'm minding my business. I put out my time and my business. They hitting me. Talking about this. The way I'm running things. I think I'm Jerome Bettis. I ain't even hit my 15 minutes. 
business already set up the extension I'm on mama's pension on my mama's mama You won't catch me slipping No more bad decisions Focus on the millions But I'm still conflicted Said, what's a million When you still killing Tell me how much you would pay To get rid of your feelings Cause I buy a bunch I How you felt in a minute In another life Said I would've been a medic Either that a man case and all the standards I've been broke I've been broke I've been broken up with I've been broken down Said I've been a hope Said your favorite rapper He is in the scope No interscope But the aftermath of being shady bro it's not going well No gimmick Cause you know the pen sound yeah. You can't tell boy I can't fail Also if you didn't know Then I can't sell We did this independent Had the silver teeth in the bed We did it all back with the realest I'm minding my business Put all of my time in my business They hitting me talking about dick We did this independent We had the silver teeth in the bed. So we did it all back with the realest I mind out my business I put all my time in my business They hitting me talking about this. The grass still grows Even if we don't know Trees still make noise and woods my black face glows behind closed doors Life ain't always been too good Sorry you missed the sunrise Don't blame me for your closed eyes Yes, I see. Oh, yeah. First of all, there should just be a rule that Zig has to sing any slow down part after a beat change. That's like really a great lane for him. <laughs> it's really just not a, a Chicago classic without the mind on it. I yeah. just don't know what it is. Yeah. 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 Shout out the mind. And for, for folks not familiar, our last <laughs> listening party was with the mind on, on his last project. So go which check is that awesome. out. Which is so good. Dear God. Yeah. Which just had its one year anniversary. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, just had its one year anniversary, man. Shout out to Don't Let It Go To Your Head. I still play those songs in the shower. That's a good shower song. <laughs> you, you also did one of my uh, my other favorite things, which is when you bleep a thing, but you can still tell what the word is. Yeah, That's yeah. like really a passion of mine. <laughs> it's it's a great, it's a trick. It's a great skill. And it also just makes that song 100% clean. And also, I've just been playing with these ideas of censorship and what that looks like to me. So, can you talk a little bit more about that? What uh, what are you unpacking in that? I mean, just like playing with different ideas of what that looks like. Censorship has always been something interesting to me. I didn't start cursing in my music until I was like twenty one. So, or like I say, like nigga, or like damn or hell, but I wouldn't say nothing. Like I couldn't say in front of my OG damn near. Um. Well, I would say a lot of things I couldn't say in front of my OG, but just <laughs> but not, not specific words. But just not yeah, specific yeah. words. <laughs> um, but then even just like getting comfortable and saying whatever the fuck I feel. So I just wanted to play with the idea. So like I like beeps. I like things. I like battle rap when they set lines up so you already know what's coming next. That's one of my favorite parts of battle rap. Like when somebody is say something and the line's crazy, but it's the setup that allows you to understand it. So it's like, Stuff like that is what I'd be thinking about. That notion of what you can and can't say in front of your OG leads very much into like what I'm getting from the song of the, you know, the refrain that we did this independent. This project is kind of chronicling or reflecting on your growth of living now th through the world and life as an artist. Right. What has independent artistry just taught you about like being an independent person, right? Because like yeah. to go from that notion of like, I can't curse because my mom's listening speaks to, you know, like a coming of age. And so as you are getting older and just becoming the man that you are, how is the independence of artistry interacting with independence in your life? I mean, it plays a huge point. I mean, because even like it really wasn't even because of my mama while initially words and cursing when I was younger. I mean, I would have to deal with that. But also I've been rapping since I was like six years old. So I used to think when I was younger, I used to always be told that I wouldn't get signed if I was cursing a lot as a child, <laughs> uh, which was actually false. Uh, very false. But you know what I'm saying? So that's where that idea initially even came from, which is rooted in the idea of wanting to be signed and wanting to be this larger artist, right? So to even now be in a state of independence, right? It definitely just teaches me to just go with what I feel, right? And what and I think that's one of the biggest things I learned after 94 Cammy music was that being me works and it works well. Uh the biggest song I have to date has three verses. Like what? You know what I'm saying? Like it's not the biggest like crazy bass or nothing like that. It's, you know, just a good song, right? Where I'm rapping about life and shit. So it was very natural to make. Also side note it was the same producer who made digits. Shout out to Hush. 
So even making digits or just, you know, talking about we did this independent because we did like so many people pass on me all the time. Like I get told no all the time. And then they always come back around and they always like, man, you're doing amazing things. Thank you. Because we did this independent now because you told me no. I mean, which is, it wasn't always a choice to do it independent. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. I don't think there's any independent artist on this planet who does that, who who initially became independent, like for fun. You do it out of necessity. If we can have easier ways to do this shit, absolutely. Without having to sacrifice a lot of things, absolutely. What? Absolutely. Digits is the, also the only song that was made. Digits and Back on Roll are the only songs that were made in 2021. Um, everything else was made either beginning of 2020 or even as early as 2017. And even the second verse is a lot of like conflict between like, you know, like my feelings and money and, you know, like that idea of literally where I was at. Cause I actually made, I made digits maybe two days after I did the lyrical lemonade summer smash. Mm. I want to stay on this song kind of form wise. I mentioned the, the beat change at the end when, when the mind comes in, but it has that that pivot uh, beat change. Pivot. pivot. No, no pivot pun intended. But the the beat pivots like a minute in. Um, what was it that drew you to that? And what do you think it does to the energy of the song? Because to me, it like the way the way that turns. If it had just started with that beat, there there's a momentum that's lost. There's something about finding it a minute into the song that really drives it forward. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I think as I was sitting on the second half. Of the, that beat for like a year, year and a half or something. And then I got the first half earlier, like uh, this year. And I didn't know what to do with it because uh, I knew it didn't have the drive to be a full song um, and I couldn't write to it. But after hearing the first half and writing to that and then being like, oh, I need a transition. like Because also I needed a new closer for my shows. Can't mm-hmm. be closing with the same songs, right? Uh, actually, Saab was the one that told me that, like, you're going to come back with a new project. You don't want to be closing with the same songs from the old project. And somebody told him that. I was like, okay, so he shared the information. And I was thinking about that. And I'm like, that's a very good point. Like when I was working on a project, I'm like, I have good songs, but I don't have a solidified like song I would like to close with or like a high energy record. But also I don't want to sacrifice what the fuck I'm rapping about. So let's find a beat where I can meet in the middle. So I was going through beats um, that I've already had and I was going through beats from Hush and I was like, huh, I can I feel like I could do something with this beat. So I voice noted the ideas. And then they both were in the same key. So I'm like, ha ha, they're meant to be flipped. <laughs> ah, ha ha. And I just love a good beat switch. I've always, since the beginning of time, loved a good every you know, every, every time is I was like, hmm. What are your uh, top three beat switches? Or the ones that uh, you Oh, damn, that's uh, a tough question. That's a, t- so that's a very <laughs> tough question. This is a no. non, non-binding agreement on what these top three uh, are. This the, art of peer pre- the art of peer pressure, mm-hmm. busy sirens. I really like uh, um, Tuscan leather because mm-hmm. it switches like four times. Yeah, Nothing was the same. It was just a groom, amazingly produced album. Uh, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> a lot of Drake beat switches I actually thoroughly enjoy. Especially um, like a Drake rap song beat switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I thoroughly. Yeah. I can see the fire mounting behind Damon's eyes, but. No fire. No fire. Hey, do you, look, do you want to share the thesis? <laughs> do you want to share the LL Cool J thesis? It's for another time, but now that it's been been named, I, I will Evoked in the space. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So I don't know who to start with, the chicken or the egg with this, but. Two people that I'm very critical of separately that then I realized are a continuum are LL Cool J and Drake for different but also similar reasons. That's pretty so, hilarious. So I'm pretty anti LL Cool J, and I think that LL is the prototype. He introduced modern fuckboyism at large. You could kind of trace all fuckboy traits back to an LL Cool J shtick or performance. The shirt off, lick lipping, you know, like the, the the mirror selfie is nothing but the children of LL Cool J. I think Drake has crafted, perfected, intertwined, continued, and expanded the love sing- song singing fuckboyism of the 21st century. So that's that's the 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 meat of it. But it, it goes way deeper. I'm sure it goes way cool deeper. <sighs> Listeners, one day maybe we'll we'll do a little. A little audio uh, workshop. We need we need a, a season <laughs> of the of episodes which are just 
somewhat insignificant things that. <laughs> well, that too. it's somewhat <laughs> insignificant things that we just are both super passionate that about we take very serious <laughs> yeah like a presentation party is what yeah. we need <laughs> it's, it's not that serious might be yeah the time but it's that serious Fem, what are your thoughts fem dot on the drake l cool j lineage i mean there's l o cool j and damn there all of us unfortunately um, <laughs> l o cool j lives in our hearts and minds <laughs> i mean without l o there's not dove jam there's no like there's no superstar rapper right so um there's no hove without ll there's no big daddy kane without ll there's not a lot a lot of people aren't themselves without ll being ll so um with that being said uh, do a lot of things age well no is lounging an amazing song absolutely so i was the last time you've heard accidental races uh, oh, I did a whole you dig on accidental races in All high right. school. So okay. I, I say, so I, I get the, <laughs> the uh, what do you say? You for you for you? I forget your flags. You, I forget your chains or something. If, some if you forget, if yeah, you yeah, forgive yeah, yeah, yeah. my gold chains, I'll, for, I'll forgive. You, I'll forget the iron chains. I'll forget the iron chains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a moment. That was a moment. R- R- R.I.P. Robert E. Lee. But I got to thank Abraham Lincoln for freeing me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy, crazy, awful, awful, and it's. <laughs> Because that was 2013, I believe that song came out. Mm-hmm. For for yeah. for listener reference, uh, this is a Brad Paisley, Brad Paisley LL, LL Cool LL J cool collab, <laughs> which LL uh, cool J for fusion that that they cooked up in the stew, which I would put in the show notes, but I think I, we'd never be able <laughs> no. to allowed to produce another episode. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, that's 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 a little wild. That song was that song actually got me out of a whole exam because, um, funny story, I was known for finessing. I was able to uh, talk my way in and out of a lot of things. I remember coming into AP English one day, and uh, I actually think I was at YCA the day before or something. And I think we were talking about accidental races, so I had the lyrics in my backpack. I'm in AP English one day, and none of us read. Nobody read. (laughs) Nobody read for the book. I walk in. I get there early, headphones on, bag of chips in my hand, obviously not paying attention. Now, I didn't read, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to finesse this essay. Because they always do like an in-class, you know, Mm -hmm. like exam essay thing. So I walk in, uh, the smartest woman in class looks me dead in the eye, like, fam, I didn't read. I'm like, damn, she didn't read. Ain't nobody read in this bitch. <laughs> so uh, she's like, yo, you got to figure out a way to get us out of this. I look her dead in the eyes, and I'm like, I got you. <laughs> I walk in, I sit down, I pull, I'm like, hmm, accidental racist. I look at my best friend. My best friend said she can merch. She was sitting next to me in class. I'm like, watch this. <laughs> Teacher walks in. I raise my hand. We start a conversation. Mind you, it's a block period. She's like an hour and a half, two mm-hmm. hour class. It's a long form show, right? I raise my <laughs> hand and I start an entire discussion and discourse around accidental races. Got her to pull up the lyrics. Got all this stuff to happen. Completely forgot about the exam. She just gave us to the next couple of days to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did she know what you were doing as it was happening? No, she looked up like, oh my God, is the block period over? I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, Jedi mind tricks. She's like, I thought she's like, we she's like, wait, we had an in class today, don't we? And everybody was like, Oh yeah, we did. <laughs> Dang, we didn't do it. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Well, very well, very well played. Definitely uh, you know, one of my proudest moments for sure. So I guess I never thought I'd say this, but shout out to Accidental Race. <laughs> 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 I'm all for in class for this. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put two more pins, but we're gonna go into the next song. Sounds good. So, what are the, what are so, the pins? so two things that you said that really intrigued me that were kind of related uh, was was the gem you got from Sab on having a show closer, uh, but that you also said that the song came you 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 traced it or charted it as two days after lyrical lemonade, um, and so I just want to talk as we go through the rest of the relationship between performance and creation and vice versa um, and how they shape each other. But then also that is a beautiful gem and we want to pull out like how community, how knowledge sharing, how relationships with, 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 with gang and other artists like shape you even outside of like hardcore collabs. So those are two pins from things that I heard that, that we'll pull out throughout the rest of the convo, but let's get into sacrilegious, right? Yep, here is Sacrilegious Slash Pray Part 1 from Not For Sale. Uh, but to be quite honest, it is what it is. Got a lie on my pen. I got some hen in my fridge. I got a life in the balance. 
the shorty just slid. I woke up at five and prayed that I ain't make no kids. I ain't prayed in a minute. The praying on it to come up. My mama prayers been working. I got a whole new position. They throwing contracts at me. Praying on the percentage. Praying for some sinning. Cause those nights tend to lead to more writings, which I need to help me elevate my digits. So my mama could pray in her house, paid for by her children. But she retired and chilling. I'm tired of paying for conditioning. Enough air in the tank to change my condition. Cool out my youngins too, cause you know it's hot where they living. Praying over bottles, we sipping, and God bless the nights nice that we get into for the liquor and women. Half the bottle gone, damn, I'm thinking God, I'm forgiven. Woke up, no hangover, I'm thanking God for the feeling. On the cusp of damn near feeling sacrilegious. So I pray for more vision, to see through false opinions. Pray to understand the cost of living. More than that of material, more in the light of the man, rather thoughts that's cynical. And that love is plentiful, and not only for imbeciles. And that the pinnacle of a man is when he shows that he cares. And not by the power that's shown whenever he's feared. Truth should be the truth, whether sober or you impaired. Pray equity and to be fair, go together like barber and share, or like clippers in hair. Pray to not take one step forward and three steps back, like falling upstairs. My man said he pray a lot, but he heartily hears anything back. He think God death for either that or he heartily dead. I told him that the answer's already dead, like the teachers gave you. No study guides are said, look at your notes. You gotta have some preparation just in order to hope. He said he pray to be like me, man. I pray that he don't, cause all my prayers turn into capitalistic. Praying for money to be the answer, like shit. Like money will fix it. Like money gon' help me make better decisions. Man, I should pray for a heart made of gold instead of some for my dentals. Pray to fix my flaws, but instead I put them on instrumentals. I should be praying for clarity to help me solve my problems, but instead I'm praying for some of the reasons that I got them. Should be praying for clarity. To help me stop my problems, but instead I'm praying for some of the reasons why I got them. But to be quite honest, it is what it is. I got a lot of my pendant, I got some hand in my fridge. I got a life for the balance. I sure these are slid. I wake up at five to the pray that I ain't make no kids, man. I ain't prayed in the man. Been praying on a new come up. I'm on my prayers been working. I got a whole new position. I got a whole new position. I got a whole new position. Freedom is rooted around money to people, you know what I'm saying? It, you mean, that's what it is. The funny thing for me, though, it wasn't until I, you know, realized that, that I'm like, bro, that's not freedom for me. That was sacrilegious. Yeah, sir, ski. And, and before, I think with this one, before we get into some of the content, I want to do the, the foreign process side first. The, the relationship between, between voice and the music what was the process and choices of the tone and how you approached it sonically to get to, to I think, some really powerful ideas that, that we'll discuss. I wrote that song, what, 2017? I think it's probably one of the oldest songs on here. My voice was completely different then. And then when I did it again in 2019, 2020, it was cool, but it sounded way more conversational. So actually my uh, engineer, when I was when we were about to mix, he's like, bro, can you just recut these? Again, you telling some shit. I need you to tell it. Um, so I was like, yeah, okay, cool. And I trust his judgment. So that's really a, that was really a judgment call on his behalf to get that, at least on my voice, to get that where mm. it needed to be. I love the uh, cadence-wise, there's like that urgency that comes, I think, probably in that re-record. But there's that one part where it's like... um Like money will fix it. The, the like... I'm, yeah. Let me speak about the phrasing like of that syncopation. Yeah. I love that syncopation in there. That's so cool. This is... A conversation with myself so i'm asking myself like like you know like because you you know when you're talking to somebody like you know money not going like this is not going to be what it is so i wanted to make sure it sounds like that like it's like money will fix it like money mm-hmm. gonna help me make better this like, no it's not but if i'm gonna relay that message and i have to sound like that's how the thought process is yeah no you can like hear yourself trying to convince yourself of each way like you said the conversation internally it sounds like that and the like resignation of like i know this is what i'm thinking i know it's incorrect I'm still thinking it, <laughs> whether right, I know it's exactly. right or wrong. Exactly. Um, yeah. Did the music stay consistent since 2017, or or how did that change and grow? No, we had to read. I, I wrote this to like a song I could never use, so I had to like recreate. We recreated the beat from scratch. The slow down keys at the end are actually keys from an earlier version of Funds. Uh, that is uh, me and Alex Bannon in the background vocals. 
um, in, in 2017, I didn't even know she existed. So, <laughs> and I'm sure she also had no idea that I existed either. So we definitely had to redo that whole beat part by part. So to, to some of the themes, you know, we we're talking about kind of that, like, like money could fix it. And then of course, at the end, you know, is you just talking and really clearly saying like, I know that this isn't what freedom will be to me. And even like that, that premise is false. But we're still living in that contradiction. How how's that contradiction going for you? Basically, is what I'm asking. Um, it is. Uh, it is. It's going. I guess trying to just see money more as a resource because that's what I can use it for, versus like a end all be all of like, oh yeah, this is what my purpose in life is to make money. Hell no. Nah. I wish money didn't exist, but since it does, if I get some, I would want to, you know, make sure that I'm using it in a way that one, like obviously benefits the things that I like, but also benefits the world that I live in. So, you know, if we can all just be socialist, that'd be great, but that's not the world that we live in right now. So, you know. What what I appreciate about how that, that wrestling that I think a lot of our generation is doing, um, fits in song is you don't just say money's the root of all evil or I wish we didn't have to have money. You come from it from a very self-reflective, self-critical place that I think particularly rappers or or hip hop struggles to like approach honestly of how we internalize, reproduce or perpetuate through materialist notions of pleasure or you like you kind of the notions of self-worth in monetary or consumption value. What can you share about that wrestling that got you to acknowledge all my prayers have been capitalistic and that leading to money and freedom not really coexisting for you, but not talking about it in the superstructure or like talking about the banks or the economy abstractly. You're naming it through your own practice and your own relationship to little C, but also capital C capitalism. Right. You know, We pray for God to enrich our pockets, which is the wildest thing in theory, right? Like, you know, that's what my, you know, parents pray for. That's what whatever and things. But in actuality, you're just paying for security or you're paying for like, you know, like comfort or, you know, like stability, right? As I got older and, you know, first time I touched a decent amount of money, I ran through it like it was nothing. And then I was broke again. Did you did you cash out in a way that you're like? proud of or was it was it? oh i mean i have no regrets you know what i'm saying but like the first time i was touching like and it wasn't the thing is the crazy thing about it is that i realized how that wasn't even a lot of money at all <laughs> right and you run i ran through like on, i was I, I love shoes you know what i'm saying so like the money i was touching i was like you know in my teens like i'm buying shoes like i think the first line of the song soul on this 40p is like 17 and thousand dollar sweaters like that's what I was spending money on, right? And I ran through all that bread and I was back broke again. Then in my 20s too, like I've been very broke and I've been like making honest money, but it's been, I've been very broke. So trying to figure out how to navigate that. And then when I first started getting money off rap, which was cool, and then being independent as an artist, like, oh, $20,000 is nothing in the grand scheme of things. When you think about recording and videos and paying people and management or whatever, like, what I thought was a crazy amount of money, what people next to me are growing up think is a crazy amount of money is actually not a lot of money. And then I realized no matter how much money I get, it's never enough money because money is a fucking idea, right? So, but then the problems that come with that and how I feel and all of the things that are equated with this are very real. So then I'm I'm in this constant like battle between like wanting to get a bag because I've always been told I needed to get a bag because of the problems that are associated with me not having a bag and then getting what I thought was a bag and then having more problems and realizing, damn, the bag isn't the solution. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So, Which is almost a radical thing to say in rap. Like, it's been said bef- but before. But when it's been said, it's not- usually it's very much said and like, damn, with the system, it's whatever, and this is this, and not really showing that the system is in us as well. Like, you know, you have to unlearn things every day. And it's also like only... There realistically so much we can do because we live in a capitalist society. So because of that, you still need some form of capital, right? But I think I think the markers of achievement can change or the markers of success yeah, can change. Exactly. That's the internal thing. Again, you need what you need to be able to be stable and stability is a key word, but Yeah, and you like what you like, you need what you need, all of this is fine. Like 
you know, I still enjoy shoes. I like, I like a guy. Like, I love a good pair of shoes. And you still have feet, so you still need them. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, changed. but also like, as I dive more into what my relationship with my, I shouldn't be praying to be rich. And that's even sacrilegious. Like, and obviously it's a play on the term sac and religious and blah, blah, blah. But what I'm praying for, what I'm asking for. So you get that line, like, all my prayers turn to capitalistics, you know, praying for money to be the answer, like money to fix it. Like money going to help me make better decisions. Like should pay for a heart made of gold instead of something for my dentals, pray for my flaws instead, you know, or just even like, you know, my homie pray to be like me and I pray that he don't. Right. Because everyone's, cause he's thinking I'm up and I'm like, bro, I'm, I have problems right now that you don't have. And not necessarily just because of the money, because of the, just because of life. I have problems right now. So I pray you don't have these, right? But you only see me up. And I'm not even up, but you see my perception of up. But you see these shoes. Right? <laughs> you see these shoes. You pray for these shoes that you I'm You pray wearing. for these shoes. And I'm like, bro, you wouldn't want to walk a mile in these, you know? I also so, think some of it is what you were saying about the, the relative size of relative bags of most people have no idea how big an actual big bag is <laughs> bro. like in the scale at which you know a very small amount of people are operating you know it, it becomes kind of all or nothing when there really is like no 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 like i've seen it like in meme form of like you're not a you're not actually a capitalist you're a worker who's been convinced to align yourself with capitalists with capitalists mm-hmm. literally because it's like people be like yeah i'm finna bag up my folks be yeah i'm finna ooh and you realize you get millions of dollars and you're still in the 99 <laughs> like, percent mm-hmm. like and I, I love what you said about the the flipping of it around clarity though because it's not just praying for simplicity or easiness or a bag but you know i should be playing for clarity instead of praying for some of the reasons that i got them meaning those yeah problems. like i shouldn't be you know what i'm saying like, like even like the middle of the song a lot of it is me just talking about like you know pray to not take one step forward and three steps back like falling upstairs or praying like praying to just move in a manner that is like shit in a moving light like you know i hear you having these like two conversations that are braided together really well so so one there is like the actual economic conversation which actually goes back to digits and independence of you know when we're talking about capitalism not to put on the hat but we're talking about control of production right and so what you just said is like oh twenty thousand dollars to flex feels like a lot like you could you can consume a lot with twenty thousand dollars relatively relatively but yeah when we're talking about production and you you know production is everything right like if you run a sandwich shop there are production costs if you run a school there are, are costs to produce you know though even though school shouldn't be run like a business but you get but what i'm saying right? Like, right. Pr- production is is what is what is actually at the question of capitalism do we want the means of production to be redistributed and then the benefits from what is produced to be distributed or are we going to have private owners control the masses of of how things are produced right and so because we have private owners it shouldn't cost that much to actually make a video. It shouldn't cost that much to record, right? It shouldn't cost that much to start a storefront business or to run a daycare or to go down the line of the type of of economic work we want to do, right? So like that is coming through on like the sack actually isn't that big once you're playing against capitalists relative to Universal and Vivendi, right? Like, Like you can never be on that scale. But then also ultimately what I hear you saying is that prayer or spiritual work or freedom, if we want to put that in the basket of, of a spiritual notion, is antithetical to capital to pursue to some of this like material accommodation. And so you can value to your thesis, your self-worth through these like spiritual relationships or through these like more material relationships. Or is there a way that you can like dialectically have them align in a way? So yeah, that's my takeaway. And I think figuring out the alignment is the conversation that not only am I having then, but I'm still having now. And I'm probably going to continue to have for the rest of my life. Like One thing I, I don't want people to assume like, oh, I figured out this is how I am. I'm, well, I'm No, this is a constant conversation. Like the song is four years old and it's a reason why it's out now. I didn't even know I was thinking like that then. Like these are the conversations that I've been continuously having. Yeah, it's definitely just figuring out what that looks like and what that looks like for me. Because what it looks like for me, it doesn't look like for everybody else, you know? Along those lines, I think we should move to... Um, let's, let's keep going. I think we should move to funds. Uh. 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 I want to buy you the world, but 
I can barely afford a meal Running on E, but I'm good if you ask me how I feel I can't put my burdens on you, I know You got things going on too And I know I'm not helping when I go ghost But to be honest, it's pride that is broken the most If you knew all my lows Barely affording what I own Can't even afford gas to see you But say that I'm gonna stay home I'm supposed to be a superman But can't even afford the cape And my kryptonite is my fear of you being ashamed I fear no one, no man, no gun but one Think will hold me to the dead and I'm gone And that's not being the man you deserve Even if that's the man that you want I can't give you my love when I ain't get my pockets none mm, Can't spoil you someone when you got insufficient funds But I don't check your page no more I don't search your name I don't spend my days saying I should've stayed no more I ain't got a way For me to get paid to love you Like I say no more But I'm too late Told you not to stay now We don't even date no more Nah, we don't even fight, fight. I can't give you my love When I ain't get my pockets none Spoil you someone when you got no sufficient funds This joint is produced by Hush, who did Digits. Yep. And, and I don't think we mentioned for Sacrilegious, that was Jabari and Rayford and Charles. Yes, sir. The great Charles Laws. Yes, sir. Yeah, and, and Jabari uh, engineered pretty much the whole project, it looked like. Yeah, Jabari. Jabari's been my engineer since I was 15. Why? Why? Wasn't he at the um the show we did, the, uh, the, the Signal Flow thing? Yes. Yes, he was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> that's my guy. Jabari was there. He was chopping it up. Oh yeah, man, I forgot about boy. that. That was a talk about a that moment. A, that was a that moment. Was a good time. That was a good time yeah. too. Yeah. Funny enough, funds was made before ninety four Camry music was. Without funds, we don't get ninety four Camry music. So hold on, y'all just met like off socials, off like YouTube type joints. How, how? Not even he d he met he he heard Delacreme too and emailed me some beats. The beats was so hot he left his number and I FaceTimed him. <laughs> we FaceTimed. He was so cool over FaceTime. I'm like, I'll fly to Florida. <laughs> That's you have to be really cool on FaceTime to get to a Florida <laughs> yeah. flight. Now that was some some superb FaceTime. To have me go to Florida? Yeah. No, I would have dropped yeah, that. Gang. I would have fumbled <laughs> yeah, that. Gang. <laughs> I can barely muster a mediocre FaceTime. So the FaceTime real. pressures are real in that. <laughs> it changed the course of music history, that FaceTime. Literally. Literally. So. He's, he's literally a great, he literally, he, he's such a good dude, man. And we're now we're just really good friends and everything is great. But yeah, that's how that happened. But I wrote Funds before then. I wrote Funds. Funds might be the Otis song on here. It was written around the same time I wrote Sacrilegious. So clearly I was having a uh, dilemma between um money and uh relationships as well and feeling like questioning my self-worth as a in a relationship like as a man right like as being the other half because what society tells you as a man you're supposed to be and how you're supposed to provide or whatever in a relationship um and the reality is the woman probably doesn't even care about that but since i care about that now i do nothing and then now we break up and then now i have money and i can't do anything because the money wasn't really the reason why I wasn't doing anything. It was ego. Mm. Are we getting into our, our patriarchy bag? Pun intended. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is definitely where that comes from. It stems very much from yeah, yeah, the, patri- yeah. the patriarchy Let's and the idea it. of having to have money or having to be this type of person in order to be this type of boyfriend or whatever. So so now like capital is is shaping our sense of self our the, the notion of manhood is the provider and protector. Right. In in a marketplace basically, right? So to the sacrilegion and to this like spiritual journey, right? Like our notion of identity is is literally shaped by our relationship to capital. Yep. And that's fucked up. That, that yeah. that'll make you be pretty violent. Absolutely, right? Crazy. <laughs> what a crazy idea. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. you're now shaping your idea based on your relationship with capital, and then that leads into every relationship you have, right? So I want to buy you the world, but I can't even afford a meal. And then I'm too ashamed to even tell you that, right? So now I'm just keeping my feelings in- inside instead of getting them out, which only allow me to be more destructive to myself and possibly people around me, right? Instead of just being vulnerable and being open because we're said as men, we're not supposed to do that either, right? So now I'm not being vulnerable and open about why I don't want to do anything because I don't want to do anything because I don't have the funding because I feel like I need to have funds in order to give you love because I need to give my pockets love first, right? And then I end up getting money, but then you're already gone and I realize, damn, I still am lonely. Funny story, the second half of that, like, I can't do no broke nigga. Get your pieces together. You can't be broke. What broke you? What made the broke you? Right. That's the whole thing. Like that's Shawnee Des and the background vocals doing. We all, knew that was talk, Shawnee talking, mm-hmm. talking all that shit. Crazy did not tell her to do that at all. I th- we, I, I wanted her to add some like because I just heard her voice on the on the record and so did Tamika. So I wanted to add um her voice in the second half. It's like I also added some other stuff. Let's see if this works. And, she, and I play it. I'm like, damn, this is crazy. First of all, you have a personal grudge against somebody. Second yeah, no, all, that was right there and ready. Yeah. Second, <laughs> but but also, but also like 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 being in these I'm like, it was perfect. It has to stay because being in these situations as a man, because of how like frail typically our ego is, right? When a woman says, no, it's okay. You're not hearing her saying, that's okay. You're hearing, you ain't shit. You ain't this. You because that's what you're thinking. Because that's what you've been told. That's what you're projecting reality. onto it. Exactly. So now you're projecting what you feel. So that's why like, it was perfect for her to do that. And that was right. It just made everything really come together. Because it was like, even though you're saying it's okay, this is what I'm hearing. This is what I'm actually hearing. Yeah. It, it turns out the like, get money and don't communicate formula is not a recipe for success for, for a, a no. healthy, for a healthy good no. person no it's not it's not a recipe for being a good person at all you know um, who'd have thunk it who would have thunk it that you know just getting money you know and not communicating um just so, stoic profits yeah, it doesn't it doesn't lead to anything it doesn't really work uh and then towards the end of the song you know, it's like a little bit of like i think vulnerability is uh i think freedom is being vulnerable without regrets right i think a lot of like white people have the ability to just say how they feel and feel away or be in a space and be completely vulnerable and no one's going to be like oh we're going to use this completely against you right i was talking to my homie the other day and he's like bro i told this girl uh, she hurt my feelings and that's crazy he like bro, that's cra-. <laughs> like and the thing is that like, we talked about like, yeah that's crazy like like he like you know when you have the out of body experience where you take out and you look at yourself like what what did you just say like, did you just say that and the fact that that's crazy is because we don't have the ability to be vulnerable the level of ridicule like think about your your sixteen year old self like oh my gosh boy I just, just just hear like. She did what? You know she what I'm saying? Feelings, and you told her, her what? Her. Yeah. Now I'm finna hurt your Now I'm about to hurt your ass. <laughs> I'm on your ass, boy. Big no little body <laughs> ass. But you said you start going down the line. Cause it's like like yo, big heart, small boy. face. Big, right, oh God. Big heart, big heart, little chest looking ass, boy. Oh God. I'm on your ass, boy. I'm it's about, my duty I to hurt a, your feelings. I got an ice box where am I looking ass, boy? <laughs> They're going. So, but it's like but it's, you know, and that's hilarious. That's just culture. But it's also yeah. crazy to think like in the grand scheme of things, like we're not even able to be vulnerable. And that's why that song is even still on the project because it's probably one of the most vulnerable songs I've ever made. Yeah. We haven't figured it out since 2017. <laughs> no, 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 for sure. So since then I was like, yeah, I, and I was saving it. Like I was, I'm like, this doesn't fit 94 Kerry music. Obviously it doesn't fit any of my other projects, but it, I think it's going to fit the next one. So it did. Um, so that's why those those funds and sacrilegious are very much like a, a great base of like what kind of that money and uh, character conversation is. Yeah. 
What I think is so interesting about the way you contextualize it, especially knowing it was made then, is based on what's around it, we know that you know <laughs> that the premise of I can't love because I don't have money isn't true, but you're still showing the effect of it, right? So I'm curious, when you made the song, did you know that as clearly? Like, is your relationship to that idea different now? How is your understanding of your relationship to masculinity and patriarchy and money changed since you even recorded it when you hear it? It was different from when I wrote it to when I recorded it to when I released it. These are all three different timestamps. So like, I wrote it maybe a year and a half before I recorded it. I recorded it three years ago. For me, the way I look at it now is like, I, I know that's not true. I, I'm 100% like, this is not, that's not plausible, right? But also I do know too that it's cool to have that as a moment because unlearning is a, a not a linear process, right? It's really just you continuing to recognize what's happening over and over again until you continue to recognize earlier and earlier, you know what I mean? And prevent it earlier and earlier because these are still things that are very much ingrained in I know my thinking and a lot of other thinking of people I know. So my mindset is very much different now, but there's re remnants of that that's going to remain. So, But it's very interesting to listen back and be like, damn, you know, or just know how many people relate to it now and be like, damn, this is where I'm at right now. And I'm like, all right, so we all have a long way to go for sure. Yeah, that stuff, you can intellectualize your way through it. And then that feeling of inadequacy or like hesitancy at taking a step, it, it rears its ugly head no matter how, you know, it, this isn't just a head thing. This is a, this is a physical thing. This is an emotional thing too. Yeah. No, physically, you really feel it. I mean, but that's what it is. Like, and I was talking to my homie about this yesterday. I was like, there's no way that your brain, the thing that sends signals to the rest of your body, if your brain is clouded, your body's going to feel it. Just taking care of, um, of, of mental health is important, but a lot of that also comes with being very, very honest with yourself and what you think about certain situations and where they stem from. That's why like the conversation about patriarchy and getting into that is a very good conversation because that's where the whole logic of me wanting to have to put money in my pocket before I love somebody comes from. So then it's like a double-edged sword of me getting mad about the roles of a man that's created by men. Yeah. It's like to, to that point of like oppression ultimately also hurts the agents or the people reproducing oppression like, absolutely niggas literally die from heart disease <laughs> like like there's literally. like an age difference or like Gee. a life expectancy difference based off you know many other factors as well to like th the health nuts out here but patriarchy is killing us and if you go i can't have love until I have money, and then you're living in an economic system that's structured to keep you from having money. Not only do you not have money, you also don't get love. And that's and love. really a shame. You don't get health care. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just in a loop. But vulnerability doesn't get you health care so necessarily. You out here, but... you out here broke, <clears throat> broken hearted, with broken bones. You owe for hella. Yeah. Yeah, yeah nah, nah we, we, you're breaking. So we want to get into back on road. Mm-hmm. I think that'll be the last one, yeah, that we yeah. that we go through. Yeah, and then we can kind of, I think, talk about the the whole project a little cohesively out of this track. I was back on road, I came back home with all the real estate. I'm just selling clothes, can't sell my soul, I gotta live. I was back on road, I came back home with all the real estate. I'm just selling clothes, can't sell my soul, I gotta live. Said I'm back again, cause niggas talking about that rap again She wanna join the roster, told her and her friends Pack the bench, I'm riding around with a pack of friends Brought a chopper so long that it look like it is packed the bench It's timetables, I rhyme greater, hater, uh Triple double, no assist on this shit I just turn it to my mind, player, player, uh Look, so my head getting longer And so is the list of the niggas that I knocked off Flow cracks in my raps, up get a rocks off Y'all not hard, and the shit I spit is rock hard I smell what y'all niggas cook And it's not boss who my competition, cause it's not y'all no. Niggas uber weak, shorty treat me like it's uber eats Put the order in, slide through the streets, give a dick drop off <laughs> Get popped off, but tryna pop off No cap like I took the pop top off Off top like a freestyle, boy, you ain't know I'm the top dog You get schooled, boy, uh, by your school, boy, uh yeah. The only dot that's hot, that's not me, it's probably friends with school, boy King Dylan, Dylan I was back on the road, I came back home Uh, 
Yeah, cause I'm a lion in my habitat. Target on my back during the riots wasn't having that. So I hit bro like with a strap at. So whole summer I was feeding niggas moms with a Glock in my backpack. All facts, ask Jimmy, little bro with stacks. Then me so many moves hit. I would call him Zach Dempsey. I'm like 5'9 if I probably put some shoes on. 40 feet tall if I stood on who I prove wrong. Tell them niggas move on. I'm too strong. I've been off the porch for like too long. Had cash to make acts to him. Whatever love we get is just past due. Niggas ain't when they get the scoop like a bad spoon. I got respect and that's better than their wealth. I'm amazing at this. I'm also good at like everything else. If he got some beef, I do not believe. Let's he tell me himself. They don't believe. I don't need their help. We would do it ourselves for real. All right, so that's that's back on the road. Another appearance from the one and only the mind, and that's that's produced by uh, what did I say, Dawood? Yeah. yeah, shout out, shout out, Pivot. Uh, that beat was made in 16 minutes. Yeah, I so I had a feeling this was yeah. one of those. So this is this like not secret but undiscussed passion and interest that Damon and I had through the last year um, of the 16th Chapel space. That y'all had going. Uh, for those who didn't come across it, it kind of grew out of pivot. But there was this community of producers and rappers who would get on. What was it Saturdays or Sundays? You would get on Sundays, right? Uh, maybe Sunday. I don't know. All my days blend now. I felt like it was Sundays. A, a but day basically, of the week. <laughs> it was basically a space for folks to write to beats that were being made. Then share it. Like the least. Poly- I mean, rather than me describing it, what was Sixteen Chapel like for you? Well, first, before we went public, we was doing that shit like damn near every day. And this is born in pandemic, right? This is yeah, yeah. So yeah. pretty much, I think we started last May of 2020, um, because we were just in. Everybody was in the house, and we were trying to figure out like what to do. So we just was like, "Yo, let's start an exercise." So we'll just get on Zoom and just, uh, you know, all the writers, all the rappers, or you know, we will write in 16 minutes. Have to write until they can't no more. And every producer is supposed to make beats in 16 minutes, and we'll just swap. And that was really the idea, just to make it feel like we was in the studio again, or just like, you know, creating with friends. Like, shit wasn't fun. We needed something fun to do. And then it became just like a nice little sparring thing, and then we went public with it. And that's really all it was. Uh, and it's cool, because now we all have that skill. So that's raw. Was that uh, a challenge or a shift in your process? I, I know Benjamin and Def C are real big on the, like, timed writing exercise. Was, was this new for you, to, to the, the kind of speed writing approach? No, nah, uh... <laughs> I write really fast. I was always the one like, okay, it's 16 minutes. You know, fam got a 40 bar verse. <laughs> um, but I would try to challenge myself during those things. Like I would like leave and come back and like 10 minutes left and try to see what I could write. Or I would like try to make a whole song, like hooks and everything. It was cool because I was rapping over some beats I wouldn't rap over usually. Early on, I would pick a lot of like the same style beats or from the same person. And I'm like, no, let's switch it up. You know, let's get this one. So that's where the challenge kind of came in. but. As for writing fast, yeah, I've been writing fast damn near my whole life. I'm not going to lie to you. It was cool. You know, I was watching um, Pivot was on Kenny Beats' show, the Cave yeah. show. And I watched Sab put, put 16, the 16 minutes minute on, his on phone I was like, let's to go. To it. And I was like, oh, this, is, yeah. this has been in practice. The 16 yeah, minutes was like yeah. queued up and That's ready to thing. go. He put 16 on the clock. Come on, man. Yeah. Even just like in the few that I was able to see online, like through Twitch, it felt like the coolest space to be able to try new things. Like you're saying with different beats, show something off. Like there's that like faint whiff of competitiveness, but not really like really it's like celebrating whatever people came up with. Um, it, se- it just seemed like a really like healthy place to be making things in. No, for sure. We really, honestly, the reason why the competitiveness is what it was, because we were all just competing for second place because Joseph Williams was there. Yeah. So... <laughs> It with his like his his cornucopia of bizarre analogies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in the rounds going to Joe for sure. So how close is the final version of that to what you wrote in one of those sessions? The first verse I think was I reworked the first verse, um, but part of it was from the 16s. So like maybe like I don't know how many bars is in that first verse, but whatever, maybe like 40% of that was from the 16th. Um, but the second verse was completely like 
like a new verse, uh, but the beat itself was the 16s. And the second half came from just, you know, writing. I think I wrote that second verse in way less than 16 minutes. It maybe took like six. Just before like talking about the project as a whole, just for the song a little bit, you know, in there you you reference the 2020 uprising and what I know to be the people's grab and go. Uh, and so, you know, 16th Chapel kind of is one experience, but then obviously the summer of 2020, a couple other like faint reference I felt like I felt felt in the project here and there, but you know, you kind of explicitly spoke from that moment and just I wanna I wanna hear more about how that time shaped you creatively, shaped this project, shaped you not creatively, just like as a person and you know, you know. Cause this is that verse is really the the second verse is really the only time I even talk about anything in 2020 on the entire project. I was, you know, people's grab and go and out of the people's grab and go, we created the scholar slide by. So we were delivering groceries all summer, you know what I'm saying? And and um yeah, then even between that, there were just so much going on, uh, just based on people who were actually trying to help people, like specifically like CDP were like targeting us and shit, like cause that's what they do. Um, but I think the biggest thing I learned in 2020 is that community is real, right? And like we really don't need a government for real. We just need access to things. Um and when, you know, the government fails us or people fail us or circumstances change, we are able to take care of ourselves. Um, I was able to find a whole community and people that like I was cool with. You know, everybody's cool, but like a lot of us is locked in for life. Like I don't we don't a lot of us don't put our lives on the line for each other because we were putting our lives on the line for the people around us, right? So um, just to, to that to cut in for it's such a specific type of intense relationship. Cause you don't even necessarily know someone that well. You don't even necessarily like like it wouldn't you wouldn't even really call it a friend, but it's someone who you like trust implicitly and will forever be connected to. I, I think it's so different from like even like the closest friendships. It's this other thing of like being in it together, uh, even if you don't know each other that way. Yeah, it's a definitely a different, definitely a different understanding. Uh, but a lot of actual friendships has come out of that. But then even just like me as a person, like because you know I stopped making music for a time. I was really just focused on the Delacrim Scholars, so that was pretty much what the focus was. So to then start making music again and figuring out my place in that, and then being able to kind of have the scholars be what it is now and trying to find a balance between that was a whole thing. So it's but it definitely a lot of growing. Um, and even coming back to this project, um, I had the idea before COVID was announced that it hit the US, but it made way more sense at, when I started like really going back to it, like starting in 2021. The conversation seemed a lot more relevant, which is kind of wild because I've had this idea for years. Yeah, just keep just for the folks who may not be familiar, talk a little bit more about the scholarship and and how it's going. So we started the scholarship in 2018 called Delacrim Scholars. Um, we're on our fourth year now. The apps are actually open now. Now we're up to the point where we award six college students with um like funding and like some gear and stuff to go back to school with uh, in the middle of the year because that's when um typically all of your financial aid runs out and you have holes in your account. So we try to give it to you around January. And then we also now have been able to expand and do like four artists as well. So like a total of 10 people. So we have like a, a called the Build the Crib Fellowship where we um, have four artists and we just give them bread and like try to give them some tools and stuff as well to help them with their craft as well. Outside of that, we do like a toy and co-drive with uh, another artist named OG Stevo from the North Side. Uh, so we do one in like the Caprini Green area just to have some representation on the North side as well. And we also, during 2020, during uh, because of like initiatives like uh, uh, Feed the West Side and uh, the People's Grab and Go, we started the Scholar Slide By, which is where we got grocery lists delivered directly from families. And we would uh, go to go shop for them and drop off their groceries free of charge, no questions asked, uh, all throughout the city. And even sometimes we'll get surrounding suburbs such as Alsip and like Cicero and stuff like that. Um, so we were able to do like 400, maybe like 50 families in 2020. Um, and we were able to do another decent, like maybe 120 or so this year. So that's an initiative we're going to try to continue to do in the summers. But that just happened out of necessity. And it would have also never happened without going to the people's grab and go and realizing that it, it was such a need for things. But also with COVID, everyone can't leave the house. But that's pretty much what 
uh, the basis of the scholars is, and that's what was growing um, in 2020 outside of me making music. What's the line? I'm great at this, and I'm like damn good at everything else. Or what's the? I'm trying to remember that song. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, amazing at this, and I'm I'm good at everything else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, and it's so consistent. You know, seeing you thinking about and expanding and putting your energy into to conversations we've had in the past around like. Yes, I do this and I am not this as an artist. Like I'm an artist and I'm other things and you can hold multiple pieces of that at once. Exactly, yeah. I'm wondering as this has unfolded, do those different parts of you feel more even outside of the artist, do they feel more kind of connected as opposed to just like different components of like, well, I do this, but I'm in school and I've done the science thing and I make music. Like how much has the cohesiveness or the like how much of those things working together in a different way? Yeah, they're all just me at this point. Even if I want to keep things separate, they bleed into each other. Like that's why it shows up when I'm talking about music and I instantly go to science, right? Or I instantly go to these. I, they all kind of bleed into each other at this point. I think it's, you know, what allows me to stay authentic. If anything, now they're more me than anything, all of these different elements of myself. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad that there's room for them both in the music and just in you. Yeah. Um, as we move towards wrapping up, uh, is there anything you feel like people should know about this project that we didn't touch on? No, uh, it's, I think it's, a. Uh, I think the only thing, I guess like an Easter egg, I don't know. It's like, a. um, it's the one before the end of a series that I started in 2014. So all of these projects are linked to each other in some capacity and it would make a lot more sense then. Yeah, you do do this. I forget that you do this, like kind of like science fiction writer build a world tie them together. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is the end of one world, and then I've already kind of started thinking of like the next like five albums after this. But yeah, so I guess that's a cool little thing that people can look back on this years and be like, "Damn, that's crazy." Mm -hmm. yeah. How is um performance coming back in your life? And now that this is out in the world, how you know go back to that notion of having you know. A closing piece. Are we pulling how, the pin just for for reference? Are we we, we are we are pulling the pin. I felt like Excellent. they've all been bumped. I'm going to go ahead mm -hmm. and, and pull this one explicitly. As you know, you, you were finishing this up or putting the pieces together while things were still very insular, and opening is happening in its in its ways. How did the notion of performance or the lack thereof shape the final production and release? Of, of this project and how are you thinking about it going forward or re-entering? Um, tour changed how I recorded at home or how I recorded my voice because uh, I just learned a different, like how to use different parts of my voice in order to not scream over on stage and shit. Say, say uh, a little bit more about that. So yeah, just uh, I sound like I do on stage, off stage. So performance is performance, whether you're in the booth or you're on the stage, still a performance, right? So looking at it like that after tour, I realized, okay, like I can play on my voice more, but also I could cut through in a different way. Uh, I also started understanding why Kendrick does that weird thing where he kind of yells, but kind of is quiet at the same time mm. um, because that makes a lot more sense to do on stage. Um, than to yelling. actually have to yell every night. Yeah. Right, right, right. So um, just started looking at my voice as an instrument in that aspect. And then in terms of performing in general, uh, just being back, being able to, you know, perform is cool as hell. The first time I performed was a very interesting feeling because it's like, damn, here we are again. I don't know how people are going to react in the crowd, but it went well. So that was cool. Mm -hmm. I know you mentioned that most of the project was recorded a while back. I am kind of glad that there are these pieces that came out of this time, right? Because I think some of the themes and just the like personal wrestling that you're doing do feel so true to this moment at least as a listener even if they were what you were thinking about years before so i'm kind of glad we have this little like 2020 2021 time capsule piece yeah here. yeah for sure for sure mm -hmm. i had this idea and i had no idea what life experience i was going to go through to be able to actually formulate these thoughts when i came up with the idea for this project in 2014 so i went through all these life experiences and it led me here and it led me here at the perfect time which means i'm on track to be exactly who i'm supposed to be so beautiful do you have any Final observations or conclusions to close the out hypothesis? Our, our, our peer review, yeah. <laughs> to close our peer review. Uh, this in the project. I mean, at this point of where I'm at, yeah, you you cannot buy me. I'm already free. <laughs> you know. Well, thank you for uh, 
choosing to come chop it up with us and share your thoughts and making this wonderful project. Um, where can folks find you, the project, and your other work in the ways you'd like to be found? Uh, yeah, you could find me at femdot.com on all social media platforms. It's spelled out exactly how it sounds. Um, I'm on every streaming platform as well. So go play my music because rent is due. Rent is due. But yeah, and then also, you know, follow the scholars at Delacrim Scholars on Instagram or to our website, org. We also are accepting donations because you know, nonprofit, um, we function off donations. So yeah, but delacremscholars.org where you can find all of our scholarship info and then toy and co-drive info and things of that sort. But yeah. And we'll put all that info in the, uh, in the show notes and all that too. Appreciate it. Thank you again, man. Good to see you. Good to get to chop it up. Appreciate you, Appreciate y'all for sure. We're at, uh, Ergo Radio. I'm at Ergo Kiss. I'm at Dama underscore AF. And we'll be back, I guess, a couple more times before the new year, reshaping the culture of our city and world for the more liberatory and creative. Much love to the people. Peace. Peace. Hey. You ain't got to tell me that I got it. Look, I know that I got it. I knew my new shit was the hottest for anyone new things about it. Notifications from the bank and got a check, no it's deposits Run the same time, I got prescribed like three antibiotics A life about balance and not a plaster People who label me as conscious I'm not turning other cheeks, but I'm not for beef Never been me if we being honest Got a little pole and keep a poke on me So they won't catch me slip As if the most famous pick of Malcolm wasn't the one in which he had the stick in it I got a little shorty from up north, but you know she built like a country bumpkin Talking thick enough to sit a cup on it, won't even move, you know how I'm bumming <laughs> Hood too, she got mob ties, can't cap, I love it I mean, she the type who drunk uncles always trying to shake up at family functions We was down the street from family focus, born right there, 1480 fizzle Dylan emerged right after the other child, that was the one up in the middle Mama raised the A team like she Della Reese, my nigga is rolling next to me like Stevie from Malk in the middle He talking sour, he get smacked in the Skittle, huh? Cause I bought all mine, if you bought all yours, it's bustin' for it bustin'. If them is all yours, then they are mine, it's nothing for it is nothing. We just hustle to the folks like, damn it, it's bustin' for it Hey, damn it, it's bustin' for it I told them it's bustin'